Last time on 500 Questions, our current genius, attorney Dan McCarthy, uh, faced elimination five separate times. I'm getting him right when I need to. Dan's on question 39, hoping to bank his money by completing his first 50. Our neurosurgeon challenger, Dr. Ogie, only has 12 more questions to knock Dan out. <laughs> will Dan continue his climb? You're now playing for some serious money. Or will the good doctor finally get his chance to answer 500 questions? You are about to witness television history. The smartest people in the country are about to play the toughest game ever devised. No saves, no helps, no multiple choices. Our geniuses are ready. The pressure is on. It's day two. Will anybody be able to answer 500 questions? Richard Quest and this is 500 questions. The world's toughest questions and only one simple rule. Don't ever get three wrong in a row. If you do, you're gone. All our contestants are certified geniuses. And let's meet our current genius. It's Dan McCarthy. See you again. There were more than a few nervous moments. You took it to the brink many times. But I'm still here, I'm still standing. Over here, there is somebody who is determined to make you fail. Your challenger, it is Dr. Ogie Ogus. You only have one job here, to get rid of him. That is correct. But if Dan gets to 50 questions, you are toast. All right. Then let's play 500 questions. Choose the next category, please. The next category. How about Asian history? Triple threat. Oh, no. Triple threat. A triple threat. You know the rules here. Three mm -hmm. answers. Each one gives you a thousand. You need to get all three to get the money. Here we go. The question is. Of the major religions founded on the Indian subcontinent, which three have the largest number of followers today? Ten seconds. Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism. Three thousand dollars. In total, you have twenty-five thousand. You're now playing for some serious money, but you don't get a penny of it until you've completed all fifty. Let's have your next category. Let's go to writers. First question there. First answer's thousand if it's right. And the question is... The first known uses of the words T-shirts and daiquiri are found in what first novel by F. Scott Fitzgerald? Ten seconds. Uh, the Last Tycoon, East of Eden, The Great Gatsby, um... Uh... Wrong. The correct answer is this side of paradise. You have a wrong on the board. So where are you going to get rid of it? What are you going to use? All right, use? Uh, let's try the Bible again. The Bible. Top ten. Okay. Top ten challenge. There are ten possible answers. We need you to give five of them in 15 seconds. You can play it or you can pass it to Ogie. If you pass it to him and he wins it, that's a wrong for you. This is a tough, tough decision because I don't think it's one of his strong categories. If I'm going to regret something, I want to regret having gone with it myself rather than leave it to somebody else. So I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I'm very happy with that choice. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the question on the Bible, top ten challenge. As written in the book of Exodus, name five of the ten plagues of Egypt. Fifteen seconds. Darkness, death of the firstborn, uh, lice, um, uh, 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 frogs, toads, uh, hail, boils. Yes! Get rid of the wrong! Add in the money! 
Because we've also had flies, livestock disease, boils, locusts, water turns to blood. Well played. You're nine away from banking $26,000. So now you've really got to exercise your strategy to get through these nine questions. Right, and I think back to zero strikes, so I think I should take on writers and try to, uh, try to get some more of that done. Writers, thousand dollars are the first answer, and the question is... Before she was the author of The Hunger Games, who was a writer on Nickelodeon's Clarissa Explains It All? Ten seconds. Uh, Woodward James, um, um... Collins. Suzanne Collins. Yeah, correct. Ooh. It wasn't your first answer. No money, but you do get through to the next question. All right. Uh, well, let's keep it going. Let's do writers again. Top ten. Top, Top ten, ten challenge in writers. Challenge. Are you going to take it? Or are you going to pass it to Dr. Ogie over there? Without knowing the question, I would guess Ogie and I both probably have a better than 50% chance of, of getting it. So I'm going to take it in my hands and, and see what we can do. Top 10 challenge. And the question is... Name five of the first ten full-length Broadway plays written by Tennessee Williams. 15 seconds. The Glass Menagerie, Streetcar Named Desire, um... Uh, beyond that, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the Iceman cometh, um, the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you did not get all five answers correct. You know what you should have done? I should have passed it, well, yeah. if it had passed, would you? I think so, yeah. We'll never know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have a rung on the board. Here are the potential answers that you could have come up with. Those are the two you got. Camino Real, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, You Touched Me, Summer and Smoke, The Rose Tattoo, Orpheus, Descending Sweet Bird of Youth, and Period of Adjustment. We have $26,000 in play. You have seven questions still to face. And we need your next category. All right, at this point, I think maybe the presidency is my strongest category, so let's go there. The presidency, the question is, what cabinet member is the first non-elected office holder in the U.S. presidential line of succession? Ten seconds. Secretary of State. Uh, yes. Get rid of the room. Put a thousand dollars. So bad. Six to go to get twenty-seven thousand dollars. Choose your category, please. All right. Well, uh, let's do writers. Writers. And the question is. What popular 19th century British author gave his many children nicknames such as Flasterfloby, Snodgering Blee, Lucifer Box, and Skittles? Ten seconds. Uh, Barry, Carol, um, uh, Byron, um, uh, Keith, Shelley, uh, Dickens. Um, oh! Probably should have gone with that one first. In retrospect, that was, uh, I probably should have gone with Dickens first. Did you know it, or were you just rattling through any British I, author? You know, that I was mostly rattling through authors, and then I said, aha, I bet it's Dickens. And it was. It was. No money is earned, but you've got five questions left to get through. Where are you going to go? Uh, I think the best thing to do is going to be to close out writers, get rid of that one. So let's Okay, you've got that. a 50-50 on writers, yeah. so probably wise. So let's have a look at the question on writers. Thousand of it's the first answer. Before his success with the novel Slaughterhouse-Five, Kurt Vonnegut managed America's first dealership for what Swedish car? Ten seconds. Volvo, Saab. Correct. Okay. I didn't know too many more Swedish cars, so yeah. I have to say, I think after those two, I would have been hard pushed as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, writers has now been completed. Next category. Let's do Asian history. Asian history, you've had 100% right so far. Asian history. Question is, in 1603, Tokugawa received what title from the emperor that named him the supreme military commander of Japan? Ten seconds. Shogun? Yeah. All righty. All right. All right. All right. All right. We are going into the 48th question. If you get it right, the money is yours. 
It's mathematically impossible for you not to make it to question 50. Bad news for you, Dr. Ogie. If he gets it right, you are toast. Dan, don't forget if you get it incorrect, well, there are consequences. <laughs> you have three to choose from. A critical situation. Before you choose that next category, we will take a break. It's 500 questions, and we are at a crucial moment. Dan is about to answer his 48th question. If you get it right, it's mathematically impossible for you not to make it to question 50. You have three to choose from. All right, we started with the Bible. Let's go back to the Bible now. Three to one in your favor. The Bible. The question is... What Old Testament book contains the most chapters of any book of the Bible? Ten seconds. Psalms. Yes! <laughs> All right, Dan, you are at question 49. The good news is you've no reds on the board, and so the money is yours. The bad news is that any wrong answers you give me carry through to your next round. So, Dan, for your 49th question, please, is it the presidency or Asian history? Let's do the presidency. For the presidency, the question is, in 1963, Lyndon Johnson was administered the presidential oath of office aboard Air Force One at what Texas airport? Ten Love seconds. Field, uh, doubt. Okay. And that might almost have been your fastest answer. It gives you $1,000 for $30,000, which is yours. Very nice. And you're Very now nice. playing to complete 50 questions. So... This is not a moment for complacency. No, stay focused, yeah. You don't need to select the category. I will do that for you. <laughs> Go on. I'll do Asian history, please. Oh. Asian history. The question, please. In 1819, what Asian city was founded by Sir Stanford Raffles as a trading post for the British East India Company? Ten seconds. Calcutta. B uh, Bombay, uh, 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 Chennai, Singapore, Hong Kong. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. Wow. You're through. That's 50 questions. $30,000. And all of that money is yours to keep, no matter what happens now. That feels pretty good. Add to it 5000 for the milestone. You've got $35,000. It means we say goodbye to your challenger. We thank you, Dr. Hogan. Magnificent. Good to see you, sir. Thank you very much. But, but, you are only 10% of the way through. You still have another 450 questions to answer. There were more than a few nervous moments. You took it to the brink many times. How tough are you finding it? I'm finding it pretty difficult. I'm, uh, I'm just barely hanging on here, you know? The fatigue is setting in, but I'm ready to go out there and do 50 more questions. But before we move any further, let's meet your next challenger. Where's he from? Some rally in North Carolina. What does he do? He's a librarian. And what makes him a genius? He has master's degrees in theology and library sciences. It's Steve Bannerman. Good to meet you, Richard. Good to meet you, sir. A librarian. That's right. Well read. Yes. Lots of knowledge. Can you get rid of Dan? I hope so. All right. Dan, your road to 500 
questions continues now with your next 50 questions. And these are the 10 categories that you have to attack. Historic animals, US cities, pop music, cooking, world mythology, finance, words and phrases, JK Rowling, random, and astronomy. First thought, gut instinct. Gut instincts? I hope I remember those Harry Potter books. <laughs> and as always, remember, don't get three wrong in a row or you are gone. Steve, you will take his place if he fails and falls. Are you ready? Yes. Then let's play 500 questions. <laughs> it's question 51 of your 500. Which category to begin? Uh, let's start out with historic animals. Historic animals. 10 seconds on the clock. And the question is, what famous black horse was the favorite of Alexander the Great? 10 seconds. Bicephalus. Yes! <laughs> Just over a second. Yeah. That's all. Well, that's the only famous historic animal I know, so maybe we should go somewhere else. Uh, let's try pop music. Pop music, $1,000 if it's your first right answer. Battle. Ah! Battle. We have a battle! Oh. Steve, step into play and prepare for battle. There are multiple answers to this question. You will take it in turns. You have five seconds to answer. Unlike other questions, here it's only the first that I will accept. Lead or follow? Uh, I think I'll go first, and maybe he'll have to do the tougher second answers. The question to be revealed after the break. questions where we are in battle as Dan goes against Steve you're going first all right you're gonna lead preparing for battle here's the question Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie sang on the 1985 song we are the world what 14 other men sang solo parts on the song five seconds Paul McCartney Would you have known any of them? Several, yeah. Uh, Stevie Wonder, Bruce Springsteen. Well, first yeah. of all, you have a wrong on the board. But let's just see who you could have come up with. 14 men. Stevie Wonder, uh, Paul Simon, Kenny Rogers, Al Jarreau, Huey Lewis, uh, Daryl Hall, Steve Perry, Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, James Ingram, Ray Charles, Kenny Loggins, Willie Nelson, Billy Joel. And you got none of them! <laughs> So, you've got one wrong on the board. You need to get rid of it. Where are you going to go to get rid of it? I'm going to go with uh, US cities. US cities. To get rid of the wrong, maybe earn some money. The question is... In 1906, the town of Derry Church in Pennsylvania was renamed for what man who developed the community around its, his candy company? Ten seconds. Hershey. Ah. Look at that. 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 I think that might be one of your fastest answers. It gets rid of the wrong, it gives you $1,000, and we continue to play. Well, I gotta go back to pop music. As painful as it was, probably not another battle. Maybe I'll do better this time. All right, pop music, 1,000 if it's the first. And the question is, after successful runs with two different lead singers, what hard rock band didn't have as much luck with its third frontman, Gary Sharon, in the 1990s? Ten seconds. Van Halen? A thousand dollars. All right. All right, another, another category. All right. Uh, let's do pop music again. <laughs> On a roll with pop music. Top ten challenge. Top ten challenge. Now... With a top 10 challenge, as you know, there are 10 answers. We need five of them in 15 seconds. Do you want to play or pass? I think it would be a very dangerous thing to pass this question over to Steve, so I should try to do it myself. I'm going to play. All right. The top 10 challenge on pop music, and the question is, 
Name five of the first ten hits by Lady Gaga that reached the top ten of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Fifteen seconds. Uh, poker Face, Bad Romance, um, um, uh, Born This Way, um, and that's all I know about Lady Gaga, apparently. There's the wrong on the board. Steve. Yeah, like telephone paparazzi Alejandro, I bet. <laughs> Let's have a look and see which ones you could have selected. There was Just Dance and The Edge of Glory, paparazzi, telephone, love game, Alejandro and Judas. That's all right. So, you've got one wrong on the board. Where would you like to go? Let's try U.S. cities again. U.S. cities, you got it right the last time, so it might be a strong category for you. And the question is... What is the only state whose capital city begins with the letter F? Ten seconds. You, sir, are yeah. in danger. Do you know what the answer might have been? Frankfurt, Kentucky. That is correct. Frankfurt, Kentucky. Now, you have two wrongs on the board. And you know what that means. Yeah. Steve. Yes. This is your moment to try and knock Dan out yes. of 500 questions. Right. If he gets three wrong in a row, he is gone. You will take over. Dan. Will this be the end of your 500 questions? We'll find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to 500 questions. Dan has two wrongs on the board. And you know what that means. Yes. Steve. Yes. This is your moment to try and knock Dan out yes. of 500 questions. Right. You will take over. Yes. Unfortunately, you have very little to work on. What question do you want to send? I think he's trying to get rid of it, so I'm going to make him play pop music. Let's be clear about this. You are now playing to stay in 500 questions. If you get this answer wrong, you will have three wrongs in a row and you'll be gone. This might be your final question. And the question is... In 2015, what singer won a Grammy for Mandatory Fun, the first comedy album to top the Billboard album chart in five decades? Ten seconds. Uh, LMFAO, um... Uh, 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 Adam Sandler, um, um, uh... That's three wrongs! And I'm sorry, but it's your third wrong in a row, which means you are... Gone. gone. Steve, you made the right decision to send him to pop music. Would you have known the answer? Weird Al. Absolutely. Weird Al Yankovic. You have answered 57 questions and you have won $35,000. Not bad. Good to see you. Dan, good to see you. Thank you. Steve, take his place. Are you ready to face 500 questions? Absolutely. You managed to get rid of Dan. Now let's meet the person who's going to try and do it to you. Where's he from? Brooklyn, New York. What does he do? He's a top chess player and instructor. And what makes him a genius? He has an IQ of 140. Let's meet Jonathan Cordler. It's good to see you. Before and unless you get to 500 questions, there's somebody in your way. It'll be done. <laughs> so now, let's see your first 50 questions. Let's have a look at the first 10 categories. Shakespeare, Australia, 
big business, measurements, the Olympics, sci-fi, US currency, random composers, archaeology. Give us an idea of some strengths there. Um, I don't want to give too much away. I like this board. I can say that much. I like this board a lot. Um... He's psyching you. <laughs> Let's play 500 questions. your first category. I'm going to go with big business. i got to go through all ten of them, so let's just start there. Question one of 500. A 45-year-old transport logo nicknamed Scissor Eagle was replaced in 2013 by what company? Ten seconds. Uh, the uh, U.S. Postal Service, the uh, FedEx, uh, I don't know at all, uh, um, Abercrombie and Fitch, I really don't know. Yeah. But that's a wrong on the board. Your first question and you've got a wrong. The answer was American oh. Airlines. All right, you have one down and you've got a wrong on the board. Right. So you need to get rid of it. Yeah, the Olympics. I'm going to go there. The Olympics. And the question is... Since 1928, what Greek goddess has been featured on every medal for the Summer Olympic Games? Ten seconds. Nike? Athena? Nike is the correct answer. First correct. <laughs> you get $1,000. Yeah. The Greek goddess of victory. Yeah. Next question. Yeah, I'll go ahead and go to big business again. Question is... When founded in 1936, what famous company took its name from the fact that it specialized in selling insurance to federal employees? Ten seconds. Geico. <laughs> Another thousand. It was your first answer. And you're on to your third question. I, uh, yeah, definitely keep going big business. Ooh. That is a top ten challenge. Yeah. Do you want to play? or pass. Yeah, so many things that this could be, I don't want to have to try to name five of, so I'm going to let Jonathan try. <laughs> Jonathan, step into play. You don't have to give me five out of a possible ten. You'll have 15 seconds. If you do it, that's a wrong for Steve. The question on big business is... According to the Financial Times, name five of the top ten largest companies in America as ranked by the value of their total outstanding shares. Fifteen seconds. Apple, Walmart, Target, GE, GM, uh, Microsoft, uh, Exxon. You've got all five. You've given our genius a wrong. Well done. You did it. Not only did he do it, yeah. he, of course, wins the question, which means you have a wrong on the board. Yep, two out of four, I'm doing well. Let's have a look at the answers that we could have had. You could have had Google, Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson & Johnson, Wells Fargo, or J.P. Morgan Chase. You're going to have to do a bit better than this <laughs> I will. if you're going to get to 500 questions. It is true. All right, where would you like to go? Olympics was good before, let's go back. All right, Olympics. Question is... In 1936, what European country hosted the first televised Olympics? Ten seconds. Germany. That's the way to do it. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do You've got 3,000 on the board. You don't get a penny of it until you've answered all 50. Where are you going to go? Free and clear. It's time to go back to big business. Big business. You're two to one down on that category. And the question is... What company paid over $11 billion in 2005 to purchase fellow retail giant Sears Roebuck & Co? Ten seconds. Kmart. Uh, That's correct. $1,000 goes on your total. $4,000. And your next category. Oh, big business. You're going to close out the category. You've got a 50-50 on that category. And the question is... In 1902, 3M first did business in what industry? Ten seconds. Mining. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what the 3M was for. Yep, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing. Yeah. You've got 1000 for that. $5,000 is now in play. You've got rid of big business. Choose your next category. I think I'll start composers. Composers. New category. The question is... 
433, which instructs the performers not to play their instruments during the entire piece, was written by what avant-garde composer? Ten seconds. Cage. Correct. First answer, thousand dollars. Next question on next category. Composers again. Why? Oh, no! We have a battle! Jonathan, step into play and prepare for battle. You know the rules. You have five seconds to answer, but it's the first answer and the only one that I can accept. Do you want to lead or follow? I, I, I don't really know what this is going to be, but I'm... Hold that thought. You will give us that answer, and we will have the battle after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to 500 Questions, where we are ready for battle. Do you want to lead or follow? Follow. Why? What's the thinking? I, I don't really know what this is going to be, but I'm... You know, happy to be going second, because it'll give me a little more time to think, too. So you've decided to follow. I will. Which means you're leading here. Are you yes, ready? I am. It's on composers. Let's have the question. According to the original film soundtrack album cover of Rodgers and Hammerstein's The Sound of Music, what six songs did Maria sing besides the title track? That's My favorite things. Lonely Goat Herd. Uh, Eight of Ice. Um, lullaby, something. Oh. <laughs> well done. Return <laughs> to your podium, sir. Let's look at the answers that you could have had. I have confidence in do, re, me, something good. Could all have... Would you have got any more? No, I never saw it. My mom made me watch that movie all the time. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> you have a wrong on the board. You need to get rid of it. Yeah, I, I think it's fairly transparent what I'm doing right now, so I'll go to the Olympics. It's a perfect strategy. It's your tenth question. And the question is... Dropped from the program in 1948, what winter sport was reintroduced to the Olympics in 2002? Ten seconds. Skeleton? The wrong has gone. The thousand goes on. Your Olympics has got two left. Where would you like to go next? Let's go to random. Random. That... Okay. It's a top ten challenge. Are you going to play it or are you going to pass it? Um, I, I, I think I'm going to play this time. I didn't like that last time too much. He's good. <laughs> He's good. I'll just keep it away from him. Okay, ten potential answers. I need five of them in 15 seconds. And the question is... Name five of the ten celebrities who were mentioned by both their first and last names in Madonna's 1990 song, Vogue. Fifteen seconds. Monroe, Dietrich, DiMaggio, Brando, Dean. Um, uh, uh, Rogers, Astaire. Um, who, who did I miss? What the heck? I, I... No. You have a wrong on the board. So let's have a look and see what the answers are. Could and should have been Greta Garbo, Grace Kelly, Jean Harlow, Jean Kelly, Rita Hayworth, and Bette Davis. Four. I got four. And we needed people who were mentioned by first yeah, I got and it. last names. I got it. So the Dietrich and DiMaggio didn't count. You have one wrong on the board. You need to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's Olympics, definitely. Oh, gee. <laughs> Jonathan, step into play. And prepare for battle! You have to get rid of that wrong and avoid a second wrong. And Jonathan, this is your chance to put the pressure on and to take him further and deeper into danger. Do you want to lead or follow, bearing in mind your strategy? Didn't work last time, but I still am confident in it. I'm going to go second. You're going to follow? Yes. Okay. Jonathan, the question on the Olympics is... Name the ten events in the Olympic decathlon. Five seconds. 100 meters. Discus. High jump. Pole vault. Long jump. Hurdles. Triple jump. 
<laughs> That's a wrong from Jonathan, which, from your point of view, gives you $1,000 and gets rid of the wrong on there. All right, let's have a look at the answers. Here they are. The shot put, the 400 metre, the javelin, the 1500 metre run, and your strategy seemed to have paid off. Yeah, he had to give one more than I did. And on we go. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do sci-fi. Sci-fi. Sci-fi, $1,000 if it's right first time. The question is... Released in 1934, the first metal toy Reagan produced was fashioned after the one used by what sci-fi comic strip hero? Ten seconds. Buck Rogers? Yes. Thousand dollars on the board. You're on a roll here, so we'll keep going. Uh, choose a category. Uh, let's do measurements. Measurements. First one of the category. It's a new area for you. Question is... Commonly used for precious metals, in what system of weight is 12 ounces equal to one pound? Ten seconds. Troy. You're up to ten thousand dollars. But none of it is yours until you have completed all 50 questions. I know. Choose your category. Australia. Australia. The question is... Once charged with 31 counts of computer hacking, what Australian is the founder of the website WikiLeaks? Ten seconds. Assange? <laughs> Didn't know he was Australian. You have $11,000 in play, and we now need your next category. I'm going to do random again. Why? They're, they're random, and playing them off seems good. Yeah. Get rid of them early? Yeah, because then he has to go to something I know what it is, at least. Yeah. All right. And the question is... What Greenpeace ship was knocked out of commission by French intelligence agents in 1985? Ten seconds. Rainbow Warrior. He's warmed up nicely. No, shame for you, but he has warmed up. Yeah, warm those things. Where to next? Um, I'm gonna stick with random. Another random question. Said to exist in Mexico, what purported gargoyle-like creature drains the blood from its victims and has a name that means goat sucker? Ten seconds. El Chupacabra. A thousand dollars. You have 13,000. Not a penny's yours yet. Let's take your next category. I'm going to go archaeology. Archaeology, a new category. Okay. Archaeology. The question is... The tomb of the Chinese emperor, known for his famous terracotta warriors, is said to have had a river of what metal flowing through it? Ten seconds. Gold, silver, bronze, uh, tin, iron, um, river of, yeah, I don't know, uh, uh, platinum, um, I've never heard of it. A wrong on the board. Would you know the answer? No idea. I would have said the same things he said. The answer is... Mercury. Oh, that, that would flow, wouldn't it? That would make more it's sense. It's a liquid yeah. metal. <laughs> you have one wrong on the board. Choose a category. Get rid of the wrong after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to 500 Questions where Steve is playing his next question. Your priority is to get rid of that wrong. Yeah, I've got that one Olympics left. I think I'm going to use it now. Using his last Olympics category question. To get rid of the wrong, the question is... At the 2010 Vancouver Olympics, what figure skater became the first US man to win the Olympics gold medal since Brian Botano in 1988? Uh, Evan Lysacek. Get rid of the wrongs! Give him a thousand dollars. But bad news for you... They're gone. They're gone. Forget the Olympics. I, mean, I know, I know. Right? So, you have to go for question number 20. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go back to archaeology. Archaeology. You got one wrong on there last time. The yeah. question is... 
What pirate's sunken 17th century treasure ship, the Quida Merchant, was discovered off the coast of Dominican Republic Island in 2007? Ten seconds. Morgan Blackbeard. Um, jeez, I should know this. Uh, um, kid? You got it! <laughs> it was close! All right, all right. You don't get a penny for that. No, no strength. Captain Kid was the right answer. 14,000, let's take another category. Yeah, I'll go ahead and open US currency. Opening the US currency, first time. And you'll have plenty of it if you get through 50 questions. The question is, the largest denomination ever printed by the Bureau of Engraving and Printing was the 1934 $100,000 gold certificate featuring the portrait of what US president? 10 seconds. Wilson, Cleveland. <laughs> Got you $1,000. 21 questions in, and we'll take the next category. I will do US currency again, please. All right, US currency. The question is, US paper money is actually a blend of cotton and what other material? 10 seconds. Linen? You are 28 questions away from your 50. There is one category you've yet to open up. Yeah, and sure, it is Shakespeare. Is there a reason for that? Um, it's, it's, it's way up there. I can't see it as well. Where would you like to go? It's your choice. I will go to Shakespeare. Shakespeare! <laughs> the Bard! And the question is... In the Shakespeare play, The Merchant of Venice, what was the first name of the title character? Ten seconds. Antonio. Yes! A thousand dollars! Next category. I think now it makes sense to try to keep playing off random, so I'm going to go to random. Random, you've had two to one success so far. Two more to go in that category. And the question is... What company, known for rifle manufacturing, was the first to mass-produce the typewriter? Ten seconds. Remington. Less than a second, and it's a thousand dollars. This is fascinating. You suddenly got into your stride. What happened? Uh, the questions were about stuff I knew. I don't know what else to okay. say. <laughs> You're now on to your 25th question. This is the most important question of the game so far. It's a milestone. If you get this question right on the first answer, you get $5,000 to take home now. I like that. We will find out your next category after the break. Welcome back to 500 Questions. You're now on to your 25th question. If you get this question right on the first answer, you get $5,000 to take home now. Nice. So, where would you like to go on the board? Yeah, I want composers right Composers. Yeah. Let's see the question. What composer of Appalachian Spring was known as the Dean of American Music? Ten seconds. Copeland. Yes! <laughs> you, sir! You have just won $5,000 plus 1000 if you finish the board to add to your total. <laughs> Jonathan, your chances are starting to ebb away. When you're uh, you know, up against uh, a big prize fighter, you got to wait for your shot. Just to maybe psych Steve off a bit, you play chess blindfolded. I do. I can close my eyes and play multiple games of chess. You believe in strategy. Strategy is at the core of chess. What do you think of Steve's strategy so far? Well, you know, Steve did a great job getting rid of big business. He was very afraid of it, I can tell. And he's afraid of composers and archaeology, too. But, you know, he's just uh, dipping and dodging around the board, and he's on a roll. You know, everything's in his wheelhouse. So, we'll see. Keep watching. All right. Choose. 
is a category on the board? Uh, that is the last random. I like that. Get rid of it. And let's have the last random question. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's a battle! <laughs> Jonathan, remember what I was just saying? I do. Stevin to play! <laughs> Gentlemen, prepare the battle. Do you want to lead or follow, bearing in mind how it's gone for you in the past? Yeah, I'm going to go second because it gives me a little more time to think about it. You want thinking time on random. Here's the question. According to the Times Higher Education World University Rankings for 2014-2015, what are the top ten universities in the world? Five seconds. Oxford. Harvard. Princeton. Cambridge. Yale. Caltech. MIT. This, of course, gives you a wrong. You've had three battles and you've lost two of them. So let's take a look at the potential answers. The ones you didn't, Stanford, University of California in Berkeley, and Imperial College London. All right. Choose a category. Get rid of the wrong. Yeah. I think I'd like sci-fi. Sci-fi. Why? You've only had one right there. I like sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> that told me. <laughs> All right, sci-fi. The question is... Drawing on his own astrophysics studies, what astronomer wrote the 1985 novel Contact? Ten seconds. Sagan? Yes! The round is gone! Well done! You've got $20,000 if you manage to get the next 23 oh, that questions. All? That's all. <laughs> Another category. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go back to Shakespeare. Shakespeare, question, please. In which of Shakespeare's comedies would you hear the line, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players? Ten seconds. Love's Labour's Lost. Uh, or, no, it's uh, All's Well That Ends Well. Um, which one? Shoot. Uh, Winter's Tale. Uh, the, uh, uh-oh. I thought it was... The answer we are looking for is, oh, as yeah. you like it. Yeah. I said all's well that ends well and thought of, yeah, oops. And you have another rung on the board. You've got to get rid of it. I'm going to do sci-fi. Sci-fi. Oh. All right. We have a battle. Step into play. Gentlemen, prepare for battle. It's your fourth battle, I know. and so far it's 2-1 to him. To him. Yeah. You have to get rid of that wrong yeah. and avoid a second wrong. You have to get him a second wrong because then you will get to choose the category in the next question. So you both have an enormous amount at stake here. You get the choice. Are yeah. you going to lead or follow? <sighs> lead. Why? Um, it hasn't been working as well as I'd hoped. If it doesn't work, change. All right, the battle question is... Name the subtitles of the first ten Star Trek movies. Five seconds. The Wrath of Khan. The Voyage Home. The Search for Spock. Uh, the... Uh, original motion picture. Is not a correct answer. Return to your podium. That means for you, Steve, your wrong has gone from the board. You get the thousand dollars, and you'll see why that answer was incorrect when you look at the potential answers that we could have accepted. The Wrath of Khan, the Voyage Home, the Search for Spock, the Motion Picture. Not the original motion picture. The Final Frontier, Insurrection, and Nemesis. You have got rid of the wrong. You've got a bit more money. OK, it's your 30th question, and you are 6% through. Choose a category. 
composers. Composers. It's had a two to one success rate for you so far. Thousand if it's the first answer. Ten seconds, and the question is. Characterized by its distinct syncopated rhythm, the entertainer by Scott Joplin exemplifies what genre of music? Ten seconds. Ragtime. Correct. A thousand dollars. Next category. Composers again. Composers to clean out the category. Oh. -ho. A top ten challenge, ten possible answers. We need five of them in 15 seconds. Are you going to play it or are you going to pass it? Before you choose, we will take a break. <laughs> Welcome back to 500 questions. Steve is playing the top ten challenge. Are you going to play it or are you going to pass it? A wise man said that he would regret it more if he passed, so I'm going to play. Composers, top ten challenge. The question, please. Name five of the ten Steven Spielberg directed films of the 20th century that earned best score Oscar nominations for the composer John Williams. 15 seconds. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, Jaws, E.T., Amistad, Schindler's List. Congratulations. Another thousand dollars. It's good. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's good, too. I'm not bad he's myself. Not, he's not getting any chances. That's because you're getting all the right answers. You can give me some more chances. Just, just get a few more wrong and I'll all dance. Right. There's 19 to go, so there's yeah. plenty of opportunity for you to knock him out and take his place. Let's have a look at the answers that you could have come up with. You got those five right. Then you could have had Close Encounters, Indiana Jones, Empire of the Sun, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and Saving Private Ryan. You have $23,000 in play and 19 questions between you and taking that money home. Another category. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Sounding remarkably like the title of one of his plays, what name was given to Shakespeare's only son? Ten seconds. Hamnet. You're on a roll. I am. I'm doing good. Let's keep it going then. Shakespeare again. Hey. And a triple threat. Here there are three answers. We require all three. Each gives you $1,000. You only get the money, of course, if you give me all three. Your Shakespearean triple threat is... Who were the three daughters of the tragic King Lear? Ten seconds. Cordelia Regan Goneril. Yeah. $27,000. Another category, please. Shakespeare. OK, cleaning out Shakespeare. Three to one in your favour. And the question is... London's Globe Theatre burned to the ground in 1613 during a performance of which royal Shakespeare play? Ten seconds. Um, King Henry V, uh, King John, King Henry VIII, King Henry VI. Uh, oh, it is. Uh, oh. King Henry VIII is the right answer. No money earned, and you continue to play. Uh, let's go to Australia. Australia. There in a while. Oh. For a battle! All right, step into play. Gentlemen, prepare for battle. Steve, it's your choice. Are you going to lead or follow on this question? I'm 1-0 leading, I think, so I'll lead. All right. Here's the question. In addition to Canberra and Sydney, what are the six capitals of Australia's states and territories? Five seconds. Brisbane. Perth. Darwin. Melbourne. Uh, Tasmanian. Uh, um, uh, uh, Adelaide. Oh, Hobart. Well done. That is all the correct answers. <laughs> <laughs> the battle is a draw. Nobody wins, nobody loses. You return to your perch, and you, sir, choose 
the next category. Let's do Australia one more time. Oh. We've got 27,000. At this rate, if you finish the board, you'll be able to pay to go to Australia. I might. I might. And the question is, curiously, what Australian marsupial is the only animal in the world with cube-shaped droppings? Ten seconds. The koala, the kangaroo, the, uh, the wallaby, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, what's the other one? The bandicoot, the, uh, I don't know this. Whoa, wrong! The answer was the wombat. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Wallabies, not wombats. Yeah, not the same. Not no, the same. and it cost you a roll. We're getting into a very interesting position here because yeah. you've got two left on Australia. Yeah. You haven't really tickled measurements, no. which makes me wonder why. Sci-fi has been very strong, three right. Yeah. Archaeology is a mixed blessing. And currency, US currency, is, is two right as well. So yeah. wh what are you going to go for? I'm working sci-fi. I'll go back. Sci-fi, $1,000 if it's the right first answer. The surrealist work of what Swiss artist inspired the title creature of the 1979 sci-fi film Alien? Ten seconds. I don't remember his name. I wrote a question about the guy, too. It's, um, I don't know this. I don't have this at all. I don't have a name to say. Nope. I'm sorry. Oh! Two wrongs! This is your first time being in such danger. Did you know the answer, Jonathan? H.R. Geiger. That's correct. With two wrongs on the board, you know where this goes. Yeah. As always, the moment you get three wrong in a row, you are gone. Gone. Jonathan, as a, a guru of strategy, now you have to pick the category to get rid of Steve. You will take his place if he fails and falls. This is crucial for both of you. We'll find out how he performs after the break. We have two rungs on the board. It could not be more serious for you in this game. Jonathan, as a chess master, you have to pick the category for Steve to answer. It's crucial, this. If he makes it to 50 questions, then you're gone. You have as much at stake, if not more now, maybe. This is my shot. I mean, it's like the ninth inning right now. This is your shot. I'm waffling between archaeology and measurements. I'm going to go to archaeology. Steve, you are now playing to stay in 500 questions. Yes. If you get this wrong, it will be three wrongs in a row, and you will be... Gone. To stay in the game, archaeology. Built 11,000 years ago and still being excavated, the world's oldest temple is located at Gobekli Tepe in what Middle Eastern country? Ten seconds. Turkey, Syria. Yes! Get rid of the wrongs! You're back in the game! <laughs> so, Jonathan. Well, with every chance I get, I'm going to try my best, so that's all I can do. There are still 12 questions to go through. It's not over by any means. Your next category, please. Australia. Australia, two to one in your favour so far. Australia produces about 95% of what world-famous gemstones called the fire of the desert? Ten seconds. Uh, like citrine, ruby, um, I don't know that, uh, topaz, um... Sapphire, emerald, I don't know. That's the category you should have gone to. The correct answer is opals. Okay, not a, not a great thing for me, gemstones. I don't know that much about them. So. Except when you buy them. Librarian money, man. <laughs> hey, you've got five grand. It's true, that's true. And if you get the next 11 questions, you will have 28,000 more. But 
That is more serious. Yes. That wrong has to go. Where are you going to try and get rid of it? Sci-fi. Sci-fi. And the question is... What 1965 Frank Herbert novel is set on a desert planet that's the sole source of spice, the universe's most valued substance? Dune. Correct. The wrong disappears. $29,000. Yeah. Where are you going to go? Well, if I want to visit Australia, i got to get rid of it first. So I'll go to Australia. You've got 50-50 on Australia. Yeah, I know. A thousand if it's right first answer and to complete the category the question is covering two australian states the world's longest playing area for what sport is 850 miles long requires a car and takes up to four days to complete 10 seconds polo um uh, soccer uh rally racing um running um i don't know uh, basketball a wrong on the board. It covers two Australian states. Here's the answer. Golf. Oh. That is a sport that you play on. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have to drive up to 50 miles wow. between holes. That's why I don't play golf, I guess. Australia has now finished. You have a wrong on the board and nine questions left. I'm going to go to archaeology. Archaeology for a thousand if it's the first answer. Discovered in Virginia, Greece in the late 1970s, the remains of what father of Alexander the Great were confirmed in 2014? Ten seconds. Philip. Correct. Get rid of the wrong. Eight questions to go. $5,000 in the bank and $30,000 on the board if you complete the next eight. Yeah. I'm going to go to measurements. Measurements. And the question is... When it was invented in 1960, the power of what modern scientific device was measured in units called Gillette because there was no precise measurement for it. Ten seconds. Geiger counter? Uh, like the, um, I don't know, uh, calculator, uh, the uh, computer, the, um, yeah, uh, nope. Wrong on the board. It was the measurement for laser. Oh, okay. Jonathan. Once again, that was a category you could have chosen. Yeah, when you had two runs on the board, but you was. didn't. I'm just rubbing salt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you had the wrong which has to go, if you can get the next question right. Uh, where on the board do you wish to go? I'll have the last archaeology. Last archaeology. The question is... What ancient Roman emperor's two barges were raised from Italy's Lake Nemi by Mussolini, only to have them burned to ash by the Germans during World War II? Ten seconds. Caligula, Nero. Okay. Gone. Woo! You are on a roll. We're going to keep going. All right. I mean, there's only two, right? I'll go with measurements. Measurements. Question is... Given to a newborn one minute and again at five minutes after birth, what score measures the baby's colour, heart rate, reflexes, muscle tone and respiratory effort? Ten seconds. I love you guys. Apgar. So who was that to? Miles and Lucy. My kids, they're three and one. <laughs> oh. It was, I mean, it made me think of them. You, know? you remember the moment? Yeah, I do. Miles and Lucy. Someday... You will spend the money that he <laughs> might win tonight. All right, only five questions to go to complete your first 50. Where do you want to go next? Measurements. Measurements. A unit of distance equal to about one two hundredth of an inch. The Mickey got its name because it measured the movement of what common office device? Ten seconds. The mouse. One point. Where next? Measurements. Measurements. The last one in the category. 
The term carrot got its name because early traders used the seeds of what plant to determine the weight of gemstones? Ten seconds. Uh, mustard uh, or like rice or what would this be? Like a strawberry, a uh, seed from a pumpkin, a seed from a carrot, a seed from a... So it's apple. Um. Wrong on the board. The correct answer is a carrot. Ooh. We are going into the 48th question yeah. with you having one wrong on the board. Yes. If you get this next question right, mathematically, it's impossible for you not to win the board. And you will go through and get the money. However, if you get this question wrong, then it is mathematically possible for you to knock him out and take his place. We will find out your next category after the break. Welcome back to 500 Questions, where we are at a critical, absolutely crucial moment. Steve, you have left yourself with one category from which to choose. Yep. U.S. currency. U.S. currency. Oh. It's a triple threat. Get it right, and you're guaranteed to take home at least $36,000. We're trying. Obviously, you're aware if you get it wrong, you'll have two wrongs on the board, and suddenly you're in serious danger. Yeah. And if you get three wrongs in a row, you are... Gone. There are three answers. You'll get $1,000 for each answer, but only if you give me all of them. You have 10 seconds. Your US currency triple threat question, please. The US Mint has locations in Washington, D.C., West Point, Fort Knox, and what three cities? 10 seconds. Philadelphia, Denver, San Francisco. Yes! And Lucy, your dad done good. <laughs> but this is not over. It's not over. It, I mean, it's over for you coming over here, but it's not over just yet. Because you have two more questions to go, and any wrongs that you now get will carry over and give your next challenger an advantage on your next 50 questions. You understand? Yeah. The category? US currency. US currency. And the question is, what building is depicted on the back of the $100 bill? 10 seconds. Independence Hall. And you're now playing to complete 50 questions. So, going for question 50 of 500. Yep, it's US currency. US currency. And the question is, what historic woman's portrait appeared on a $1 silver certificate in the late 1800s? 10 seconds. Anthony Martha Washington? Uh, okay. Yes! <laughs> You've won 37,000 plus 5,000. That's 42,000 dollars. It's yours now. But you still have 450 questions of 500 to go. And Easy. <laughs> you have been an amazing challenger. You have tried to psych him as much as you could, but we say goodbye yes. and wish you well. Jonathan Bush. <laughs> How are you holding up? Pretty good. Pretty good. A long way to go. Can you do it? Yes. Will you do it? Maybe. <laughs> well, let's meet your new challenger who's determined to knock you out and take your place. Where's he from? Neighborville, Illinois. What does he do? He's a professional gambler. 
what makes him a genius? He has an IQ of 158. It's James. James Holzhauer, nice to see you, sir. Hi, Richie, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. You're 30 years old. I am 30 years old, yes. You're a professional gambler. That's correct. You have one goal here. What is that goal? Knock him out. Can you do it? I'd bet on it. All right, so what do you think your odds are of getting from that side of the studio to this side? Darn near 100%. Oh! He is confident. He is. Smart guy. You have to get through 50 questions to see him off. And these are your next 10 categories. World holidays, horror fiction, food facts, acclaimed TV shows, historic ships, California, random, opera, footwear, and the United Nations. It's a lot of different stuff. Yeah, these are going to be really difficult. Throughout this, you know what you're doing here. You are watching closely because at various points you'll get the chance to pick on Steve's weaknesses. You ready? I am ready. Then let's play 500 questions. <laughs> Choose your first category. Acclaimed TV shows. Acclaimed TV shows. Let's see the question. What edge of your seat Showtime thriller is based on the Israeli show Prisoners of War? Ten seconds. Homeland or, um... Yes! <laughs> Quick answer, thousand dollars, fifty-first question. Stay there, claim TV show. <laughs> you may be regretting it now. I might be. This is a top ten challenge. Ten answers, and you have to give me five of them in fifteen seconds. Yes, sir. Play or pass. Yeah, I'm going to stick with playing. I'll regret it more if he just nails it, so I'll just go ahead. All right. And the question is... Name five of the first ten winners on American Idol. Fifteen seconds. Clarkson, Studdard, Underwood, um... Shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh... Fantasia, I hope that's worked. Uh, um... Where'd they go? Shoot. Um... Oh, no. God, I did this part has gone. You did not get five answers uh, correct. James, would you have been able to tackle that? Taylor Hicks, David Cook, uh, Chris Allen, right. Philip Phillips, Scotty McCreary. All right, let's see who you could have selected. James has actually given us most of the answers. Uh, you could have given us Taylor Hicks, yeah. uh, Jordan Sparks, David Cook, Chris Allen, Lee or Scotty. So, you have one wrong on the board, you need to get rid of it. That is the urgency now. But we've got an entire yeah. board to play with. World Holidays seems like my safest. World Holidays. The question is... A national holiday in both Australia and New Zealand, Anzac Day, commemorates what World War I battle in Turkey? Ten seconds. I... The Battle of the Dardanelles, the Bosporus... I don't know this. Um, the, uh... I... Um... Istanbul, Astana, I, I don't know. I don't know. Whoa! You have two wrongs yeah. in a row. Yeah. James, would you have known the answer Gallipoli. to that? Gallipoli. Gallipoli is correct. Yeah. All right. You've got two wrongs in a row. You're in a critical situation. Yeah. If you get the next answer wrong, it will be three wrong in a row, and you're... Gone. And that means that James gets to choose the next category. James is a gambler. What's your thinking? Well, I see he's got a couple wrong already. He might be trying to get rid of acclaimed TV shows. I don't really know, but I'm looking at this guy. His shirt's not even tucked in. I think I have to go for footwear. Whoa! <laughs> You've chosen the category footwear. Yes. If he gets this wrong, you are over here. Oh, really? And... <laughs> Don't get smart, because once you're over here, it will be different. Steve? Yeah? You've been here before? Yeah. You are now playing to stay in 500 questions. And the footwear question is... Founded in 1978, what popular women's shoe store is named for the address of its first location in Manhattan? Ten seconds. Nine West. Yes!
Give him a thousand dollars. Any comment? Clearly, I cannot size the man up by one look. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Choose the next category. Yeah, we'll go back to my original plan. I'll go with acclaimed TV shows. Acclaimed TV shows. The question is. Who stars as Middle University's law professor Annalise Keating on the show How to Get Away with Murder? Ten seconds. I don't know. I haven't seen an episode ah. of this. Um, it, um, oh, yes. uh, I don't have anything. Yeah, I really don't. Smith Williams, I don't know. I do not know. Wrong! That's the category you should have gone to. Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Viola Davis, it is correct. You have one wrong on the board. You need to get rid of it. Can you do it? Yes. We'll find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to 500 Questions. Steve has got one wrong on the board. Get rid of the wrong. That's your number one priority now. Where do you want to go? Um, United Nations. <laughs> it's a battle! Now, James, step into play. All right, gentlemen, prepare for battle. Are you going to lead or follow? I kind of did both last game, and it worked better when I led, so I'm going to go ahead and lead again. The battle question on the United Nations is as follows. What are the six official languages used at the UN? Five seconds. English. Chinese. Spanish. French. Arabic. Russian. Yeah. Good job. Well done. The battle is a draw. Nobody wins, nobody loses. James, return to your perch. All right, you've still got one rung on the board. That has to go, and you need to choose the next category. I'll still do United Nations. Same plan. All right, the question is... Trigvi Lee, the first UN Secretary General, was born in what country? Ten seconds. Sweden. Norway. <laughs> the wrong has gone. Where to next? I will go with a claim TV show. Oi! <laughs> a triple threat. Three answers. You get $1,000 for each answer, but you only get the money and the question if you get all three. And the question is... Name the subtitles for seasons two, three, and four of American Horror Story. Ten seconds. Coven and two other things. Uh, <laughs> I, I have not seen these. Um, yeah, I, I, like, I know they exist, but I don't know them. I really don't. A wrong for bragging rights. Do you want to have a go? Asylum, freak show. Freak show. Yes. Yeah. Impressive. You have a very good score. You have every question right that he's got wrong. <laughs> yeah. Of course, all of this means nothing if you don't get over here, but... I will. <laughs> Steve has one wrong on the board, which yeah. needs to go. It does. And sooner rather than later. Yes. I'm going to go back to United Nations again. It's been good to me so far. And the question is... What historical figure coined the name United Nations? Ten seconds. Woodrow Wilson, uh, Winston Churchill, um, uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Truman. Yes. Okay. Roosevelt was the right answer. Next question. Let's get some more money for you. I think I will go with acclaimed TV shows. <laughs> okay. You've gone for acclaimed TV shows. It's been somewhat of a disaster for you. <laughs> Indeed. Three against one, not good odds. And the question is... On Breaking Bad, Walter White shared an alias with what real-life Nobel Prize-winning physicist? Ten seconds. Um, it's, um... What does he go by? It's... Oh, jeez. Um... Uh, Fermi... 
Einstein, it's not that it's, um, uh, shoot, um, I, wow. Uh, a wrong? Uh, Say my name, Heisenberg. Heisenberg, <laughs> yeah. All right, so you have a wrong on the board. You've done 60 questions. You're hanging in there. Choose a category. Forget about the money. Get rid of the wrong. Acclaimed TV shows, thank the Lord, has gone. Indeed. Which category would you like to go for? United Nations. United Nations. To get rid of that wrong. A very strong category for you so far. And the question is... Which main body of the UN administers the day-to-day -day work of the organization and prepares studies on human rights? Ten seconds. General Assembly or the uh, Secretariat or... Okay. No money. The wrong has gone. Come on, we've got all that to go for. Yeah, I'll go ahead and go to horror fiction next. Horror fiction, first of the category. And the question is... In an 1848 letter to a fan, what American author wrote, I became insane with long intervals of horrible sanity? Ten seconds. Poe? Yes! Thousand dollars. Next category. We'll stay there. Horror fiction. Horror fiction. First answer gets you a thousand if it's correct. The question is... Located about two miles from Tarrytown, what fictional village was the setting for Washington Irving's 1819 story about schoolteacher Ichabod Crane? Ten seconds. Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> Thousand. Now you're motoring. Well, if it's all, like, 1800s horror fiction, I'll be in better shape. I was worried it was going to be, like, modern stuff that I clearly am super good at from the TV guy. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> yeah. Where would you like to go? Uh, horror fiction again, please. The question is, interview with the vampire author Anne Rice once admitted that she modelled what blonde vampire character after her husband? Ten seconds. Lestat. Correct. You have $5,000. And you're keeping a very comfortable, respectable 72% hit rate. Which category would you like to go for? I'm going to go ahead and go to California. California. And the question on California is... James Marshall started the California Gold Rush in 1848 when he discovered the precious metal at what lumber operation? Ten seconds. Sutter's Mill. Correct. A thousand dollars. All right, you've got 6,000 in play, but you don't get a penny of it until you've completed all 50. Uh, the board is fairly open. You have four categories you haven't even tickled. Okay, um, I'll just go to food facts. Food facts, you're, start you're starting with your... Oh. Triple threat. I need three answers. Each gets you $1,000, uh, but you only get the money if you get all three. Ten seconds, and the question is... After Bud Light, what were the next three top-selling domestic light beers in the US in 2014, according to Beverage Industry? Ten seconds. Miller Light, Amstel Light, Michelob Light, Michelob Ultra, um... Jeez, uh... Uh, Rolling Rock Light, I don't know. Only one right, so you get a wrong on the board. Okay, these are the answers. Natural light and cause light. Yeah, that was a hard one, I think. That was a hard one. <laughs> you have a wrong on the board. Will you get rid of it and be the first person to answer 500 questions? Join us next time to find out. Good night. to reach 100 questions. I like that. Or will the gambler knock him out and take his place? Can you do it? It's a long way to go. Whoa, that's another wrong. You've got two wrongs in a row. You're in a critical situation. Find out tomorrow as the seven-night event continues. Take his place! <laughs> will anybody be able to answer 500 questions?